Hey everyone, Bonnie here. It's been a while. Um, so I came up with this idea of sharing my testimony because you usually see the testimonies of old witches or atheists or something and how they came to Christ. And while that's fine and dandy, you don't really see it a lot with other religions. Um, and I wanted to share my testimony because I feel like, I don't know, I feel it's a good idea to share why you believe the way you believe if, if you want to, I don't care. <laughs> anyway, um, so growing up, I was a very devout Christian. I was in the choir at a young age. I was the treasurer of the youth group from the age of 11 until I left. Um, it, the funny thing is, is I was like 11, 12 years old and I'm with the teenagers. And the reason was I knew a lot of scripture already. I understood the Bible a lot better than most of the kids in my class. So they're like, she's too advanced. She needs to go over there <laughs> because I was asking questions. They couldn't like the other little kids were just like, what? <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I was very devout. I was in the choir. I was a treasurer in the youth group. As I got older, I helped teach the kids. Um, but I, I even at one point was, I remember being at the altar and we were praising Jesus and I started speaking in tongues or light language as it's referred to on from others who are not in Christianity. But I started, I didn't like it. It felt weird. But it was my soul reaching out and I understood that part but it felt really weird and I've never <laughs> done it since I've never gone that deep into my soul since I was like 10 but um but yeah, I grew up very devout and my mother was the head of the women's group um, my stepfather was the head of the men's group he was also in the choir um, he was he was a guitarist as well, and he was a deacon. And um, we were very enmeshed with the church. However, my stepfather was very abusive. He alienated us from outside. Um, we couldn't have friends that weren't in the church. Like I could have friends, but if they weren't in the church, they weren't allowed in the house. Um, like I had been, I couldn't go to slumber parties because they weren't church friends I couldn't I could go to the party but I had to leave before the slumber part came but um he was very abusive he manipulated my mom a lot um gas litter and he was abusing my my brother my older brother and myself and the only reason he didn't abuse my sister was because she was too old he was a sexual predator and there was a lot of <sighs> bad vibes from this guy he was he was not a good person and being a devout little kid I felt abandoned by God because I was going through abuse from the age of nine until I was 13 when I finally spoke up about it and I was I was very angry with God because if I give you all of this and in return you give me abuse I was told God was my protector. I'd pray for God every night, and every night my stepfather would come in and abuse me. And I felt like there was just a lot of animosity and gossiping and bigotry and hypocrisy. And it was in the church, and I found that it was common in churches. Because I've been all, I've been to a bunch of churches. It's just it's common in churches. Um, I hate to say that it's very rare but it is and um, there's just a lot of stuff the when it came to being an organized religion I just I didn't I didn't agree with it and I lost my faith in God because it wasn't fulfilling the needs of a little girl yeah I could read scripture and take solace in God but there's no solace if you're being abused and so when I was 13, 
I had just seen the movie The Craft. And I th it just opened up my mind to a world of possibilities. So I went to the library and started researching books on witchcraft, on Buddhism, on, on Hinduism, Eastern religions, just a bunch, even Sikhism, I think, at one point. But I started reading about these other philosophies and how God doesn't control you. You control you. You're the master of your own actions, your own reactions. Everything is you. What you put out there is what you get. And like something clicked in my head. I was just like, okay, I have the power. And that was one of the reasons why I spoke up because I didn't realize I could. I thought I just had to endure it until God showed somebody. Um, because I, I was, I was a 13 year old girl. I was going through a lot. I was going through changes, bodily hormones, just a bunch of shit. And this man is coming into my room every night to abuse me, to touch me, to, ugh. And I did love him. I did love my stepdad, but he was not a good person. And it broke me. And then I found Scott Cunningham's book on witchcraft, the first one and bought that and then I swiped at Hastings. I remember it was Hastings Books and Entertainment and um, they had Silver Ravenwolf's Teen Witch on there and I stole that. I didn't have money so I put it in my backpack and left. Um, I was a little dumbass when I was younger. I'm still a dumbass but not as much. But, um, but yeah, I started reading and I realized I am the master of my life. I have the power to create new threads or weave old threads into something new. And I realized that my words had power. That's why it's called a spell. You know, you're spelling it out. That's your power. And it was, it was just like, like a, like, sunshine in my face I just it felt like home and I had always when I was younger I had always seen God as a motherly figure mostly because I didn't have a good father figure uh, my biological dad was absent for most of my childhood and my stepfather was an abuser and like the only person who was a good father figure to me was my older brother Nestor and I love him dearly he's still like a father figure um, sometimes we get on each other's nerves, we're siblings, but we're so far apart that it's, it's not a big deal. But, um, yeah, I didn't have a good father figure growing up and the only example I had was my brother. He was a really good example, but he was still my brother, not my father. And so I didn't resonate with a father figure. So when I realized there's goddess-based religions, I, that's when I started researching. I'm like, wait, there's there's more to this than just Jesus and God. Now I have no problem with Christianity. I have no problem with Christ. Jesus was a was dope. He was he was a cool dude. He wanted you to love your neighbor, love your family, take care of the earth. He wanted to love the stranger as well, just the refugee, everything. He was about love and trust. You know, the whole God thing, I don't know about, but Jesus Christ was a cool dude. And um, so I have no problems with Christianity. Just, I don't like it forced down my throat. If I wanted it, I would have researched it. I would have gotten it myself. And um, I'm very well versed <laughs> in the Bible, so you don't have to read it to me. I have my own. Just give me the scripture. I'll look it up. But when... I came into witchcraft it was like something changed something shifted and it made me realize I have power within my words I have power within my actions and the divine can help me but I am I am the creator and I know that sounds blasphemous if you're coming from a Christian point of view like oh well God is the creator yes and no um, I believe that if you believe in something, it will come true because you have power. You create your own threads and you can interweave old ones. 
into something new. And, um, and if you don't think about it, if you don't give it power, then it loses its power. It's the same thing with gods. It's, it's, it's kind of like it's an idea. And then everybody agrees, and that idea becomes powerful because everyone agrees. But once everybody disagrees, and it's no longer useful, it dies away unless until it's needed again. And that's how I see religion. And um, but yeah, I I chose witchcraft because it suited me to the point where I felt secure, where I felt at peace with myself. I've lost myself a bunch of times throughout my lifetime. Um, I was a scared little girl when I was little. Um, I was a scared little teenager. I was a scared new wife and I've been a scared ex-wife. <laughs> and um, I've lost myself along the way, but witchcraft has always helped me find myself in the way that I weave my words, in the way that I raise my hands. Just, it was a different feeling. It was a warmth. And I, I can't say I, I want anything different. I really do enjoy being a witch. I really do enjoy the work that I do. And if you don't like it, you can suck eggs. But yeah, that's, that's my testimony on why I became a witch. Um, if you have any questions, I have no problem talking. You guys know I like to talk. But you guys have a great day. Brightest blessings.